Captain Coder here, and in this guide, we will be learning about ray casting in Unity's 2D physics engine to detect when our player is on the ground. This is the sixth video in our 2D platformer project, and if you missed the previous videos, you can find a link to them in the description or below, or you can hop right into this part using the provided Unity package. And if you would like to be notified when the next video is out, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Before we hop in, I want to remind you that you can ask questions, share your projects, and join Captain Coder's Academy on Discord or catch me live at captaincoder.live where I create fun projects like this, chat with the crew, and drink way too much bean water. All right, let's hop in. At this point, you have yourself a little platformer that you can jump, you can run around between these platforms, but there's a couple bugs in here that you may not have noticed. The one that we're gonna address today is this ability to continue jumping. We can jump infinitely, and that's almost certainly not what you want, unless maybe you're making a Flappy Bird clone. But in our traditional platformer, we only want to be able to jump when we are on the ground. And so we're going to add a Boolean to our player jump script here to track if we are on the ground. So I'm going to start by creating a member variable called is on ground. It's considered a good naming convention to start your Booleans with an is or a has. What we want to do is if we is on the ground, that is when we want to jump. So we want to add to our Boolean expression here, this input dot get key down. So if we press space and we use double ampersand to represent that we want to ensure that two things are true. So if we is on ground and we press space, then we apply our jump power. But to demonstrate that it works, let's go ahead and add in a serialized field so we can manually set whether or not we is on the ground. And we'll come back over to Unity here. I'm back in my game. I have my script loaded. I come over to my player and I can come down inside of the inspector and I can find my player jump controller here. We'll notice that is on ground is unchecked. That means it's not true. If I try and jump, I can't do anything. But now if I check this, I can jump. I can still infinitely jump. The idea when you're programming is to take a complex thing that you may or may not know how to do and break it into the smallest steps possible. In this case, I know I need to detect if I is on the ground. And to do that, I can use a bool, which is a true or false value. I may not know how to detect that, but I know I'm going to need that. So I added that in and I can test that independently of whether or not I know how to detect I'm on the ground. Go ahead, add an is on ground to your code, and then I'll meet you on the other end. Now that you have added in a Boolean to track whether or not your player is on the ground, we need a way to actually determine if the player is on the ground. And there are many ways to do this. The way we are going to do it today is using array cast. The idea is to draw a line, a ray, from the center of our player downward and see if it intersects with the ground. To do this, we need to be able to determine how long the line should be drawn. Our box collider actually has some features that will tell us how big we are. So let's go ahead and hop back into our code here. And in our update method, I'm going to add in a debug.drawRay. So we can start out by drawing a ray, figuring out if it's going to work for us, and then we'll actually do a ray cast with it. There are several inputs to this. The first one's to start. This is the origin. We're going to start at the center of our player. So it's going to be our transform.position. The direction and length of the ray, how far we want it to go. In this case, we want to have it go vector 2.down. We're going downward. We're going to have to determine how far it goes down. For now, let's put in a 5 here. We're going to have to adjust that, figure out how to do that in a moment. Let's go ahead and add a color to it and do a color.green. And then a duration. This is how long we want to leave it on the screen. Because we're calling this every frame, I'm going to go ahead and just put a 1 in here. Let's check it out. 
Here I am, I'm clicked play and I'm on the game tab. We don't see anything here. The debug.draw array will only show up on our scene view. So notice we have this line, five is way too big here. If I move my player around, you'll notice it sort of moves with it. Because we have one second, it'll actually leave it on there for a full second as you're moving. You can adjust as appropriate as you would like. But what we want to do is actually use the player's box collider to determine a good distance to check it. To get the box collider, we can use get component just like we did with the rigid body. So I'm going to come into my awake method so I can cache that value. Get component. This happens to be a box collider 2D. And we'd like to store it. The type here is the type of variable we need. So I'm going to introduce another member variable, a private box collider 2D. I'm going to call it collider. Next, I'll go ahead and assign that value using the assignment operator. That's what the equal sign is. And then finally, I can extract the length of that collider, the size using that collider. So I'm gonna create a float here called distance. Set it equal to collider.bounds. This will get us the full bounds. And then I want to use extents. Extents will get us half the distance. So the extents is how far we extend from the center of the object. And I wanna do it in the Y direction. So collider.bounds.extents.y. And rather than multiplying by five, I wanna multiply it by our distance. Now, when my game is running, I come into the scene view, I see this green line drawn, and it's exactly the distance. Unfortunately, this distance isn't enough to actually intersect with the ground. We need to add in a little bit extra to actually intersect with the ground. So I want to introduce a new variable to help track that distance. To make it easy to configure and test, I want to go ahead and add in a field here at the top that's going to be serialized, private float distance delta. Delta is a word that's often used to say a difference between something. So we're going to do a distance delta. And I'm going to serialize this field so I can play around it with my inspector and figure out the distance that I want. Because I don't know off the top of my head, should it be 0.1, should it be 1, should it be 0.02? What should it be? I don't know. So I'm going to introduce a distance delta here. And then in addition to the extents on my Y axis, I want to add in my distance delta here. Now in my play mode, I can see this line by default, my distance starts at zero and I can play around with this number to see how long I want my distance delta to be. Let's try 0.1. 0.1 seems reasonable. It might be a little bit too much if I look at my platform. So if I hold down control and click on my platforms, I can actually see that we're intersecting pretty far in. I can go even smaller than 0.1. Let's try 0.02. 0 0.02 might not be big enough, 0 0.05 maybe. Excellent, I'm gonna go with 0 0.05 for now. Awesome, now it's your turn. Go ahead and add in a member variable for your collider. Use it to extract the distance, add in a distance delta value, and then draw a ray into your scene so you can determine how far you are doing a ray cast. Now that you're drawing your ray onto the screen and you can see how long it is detecting, we want to actually perform the ray cast. We can do this using physics2d.raycast. This will actually cast a ray. The arguments are similar, but not identical. So it's gonna be transform.position. This is the origin. We wanna do the direction, which has to be vector2.down but the distance is a separate argument. So we're gonna go ahead and put in distance here. So we're gonna raycast from the center of our player downward the specified distance. And we need to save the result of this raycast. It returns a type here. If we hover over, we see it returns a raycast hit 2D. This is a data type we can use. So we're gonna create a raycast hit 2D raycast hit and this has information about what was hit the angle it was hit all sorts of good stuff the thing we most care about happens to be the collider 
Raycast Hit Dot Collider. We want to determine, are we hitting the ground? Let's add a debug.log here to our Raycast Dot Collider. Raycast Hit Dot Collider to see what we're hitting. You're going to see that there's a small bug here. Let's hop back into Unity. Here I am back in Unity. I'm running and my collider is being output here. It happens to be the player. We're colliding with our player's box collider. If I turn off my box collider, you can see that suddenly I'm colliding with the platforms, but I need this box collider. Notice when I turn off, I fall out into the universe. We need a way to specify that we only want to detect specific platforms. We can do this using our layer mechanism here. Let's come to our layers in the inspector. I have my player selected to go to layers. I'm going to go to add layer. I'm going to create a layer called platforms. This will allow us to specify that we only want to interact with platforms. Then in my hierarchy, I'm going to select my platforms and I'm going to set this to be on the layer platforms. Now that I've added in there, it'll show up in the drop down. Finally, we want to be able to access this layer from our player controller. One of the ways we can access this in our player jump controller is by adding in a layer mask data type that we can set in the inspector. It says, which layers should we use to detect if we're on the ground? So I'm going to create a new variable here called layer mask. I'm going to call this our ground mask. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and serialize this field so I can access it in the inspector. Now that I'm in the inspector, I see my ground mask here and I can specify which of my layers I want to use. In this case, I only care about my platforms. Maybe I want to detect more than one. I could select as many as I'd like, but in this case, I only care about my platforms. Now in my code, I can actually come down to my Raycast hit and there's an optional fourth argument I can use that's called layer mask. I can put my ground mask variable here and it says only collide with elements that are in this layer mask. And now when I start my scene, you, we will see that I start as null. My player started above the ground. It shows null in the console and below that when i get to the ground it shows the platform now when i jump it will switch between null and platform let me turn on my is ground here when i jump you'll notice null increases when i'm in the air and platforms increases when i'm not because i'm in collapse when if i put collapse here we'd see it a little bit more explicitly the last thing i need to do is actually assign my is on ground variable to be equal to the Raycast hit colliders state. In this case, Raycast hit collider, it's going to be null or not null. If it is not equal to null, that means that we hit something. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and take out my debug.log here to clear up the clutter in my output console. And now when I run my program, we can watch in the inspector down here as the is on ground changes when we jump. Notice when I'm in the air, it turns off and when I'm on the ground, it turns on. So now I can no longer double jump in the air. Fantastic. Now it's your turn. I want you to go ahead, use physics2d.raycast to raycast downward, checking for the ground, add in a layer for your platforms, and then update your is on ground Boolean variable to store whether or not we are hitting a collider. I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this guide useful. Sadly, we still have a few unintended features in our platformer. Can you spot them in play mode? Let me know by leaving a comment in the description below. And if you would like to be notified when the next video is out to see how I approach fixing these deficiencies, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye bye